all right um hi guys a very good evening um if you're able to see me hear me and also see the screen um send a hi good evening something in the chat and uh, yeah if the setup is fine we can get started Um, hi guys, a very good evening. Um, if you're able to see me, here, um, and also see the screen, um, send a hi, good evening, something in the chat. And yeah, if the setup is fine, we can get started. Okay, perfect. Uh, so I can hear, uh, uh, I can see a couple of responses in the chat. So yes, that means everything is good and we can jump in. Um, just give me one second. And done. Yes. So um, hopefully everybody who is here today uh, was also in the previous session. So I'm assuming that, you know, you have attended the first one and now you are, um, now you are here for the second session. And um, what we will be doing, of course, is doing a quick recap of what was covered in the previous session before we continue to a new topic uh, or start the programming from this session onwards. But yes, before we jump into, you know, uh, a new topic, uh, what we'll do is I'll give you those puzzle questions like we did the other day. We'll do a quick recap and then we'll start discussing something new, uh, which is HTML. No, that is our agenda. Uh, yeah. yeah, that is going to be our agenda for the day. So we are focusing on HTML today. Um, again, you're not expected to know anything about HTML. We'll cover everything from scratch. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute, but before again, jumping in, here's a quick agenda for today. So this is what we are focusing on, right? Uh, we are going to start off by looking at, um, those questions, those puzzles, like we did in the previous session. Also, once that is done, then we'll do a quick recap of what we covered in the last session or the first session, and then we'll jump into HTML. The rest of the session uh, will more or less. Um, you know, revolve around HTML itself, right? So yes, with that, uh, let's quickly get started with those questions. I hope you remember the format. Uh, it was very simple. So what I will do is I will put the question on the screen. I will give you one minute to look at the question, think about it and put your answers in the chat. After a minute is done, we'll discuss the answer and then we'll move to the next question. Is that clear? Um, so again, if you have understood this, just send a yes or a clear in the chat so that I know you have understood this and we can um, move to the first question. Great. Uh, here is the first one. So this is the first question. Again, like always, um, please take a minute, read the question. Put your answer in the chat. Whatever you think is the correct answer, it could be, you know, you can, of course, attempt it at least. And then we'll, uh, you know, move to the next question. So I'll give you a minute and you can put your answers in the chat. Okay, so we have a couple of responses here. Let's check. Um, the first response is mind. Um, I don't think mind is appropriate here. Mind, um, again, so space, room, all of these terms don't really apply to mind. But yes, keyboard is the correct answer. So I think most of you have got that right. Um, I've received keyboard in the chat from a lot of people. Keyboard is the correct answer. Um, that is um correct, right? So yes. Uh, keyboard is the right answer. Again, keyboard has keys, but opens no locks. Um, keyboard has a space key, but of course, space bar, but there is no room. Um, you can enter because there's an enter key, of course, but you can't go outside. There's no key like that. Um, so yes, the correct answer for this one is a keyboard. 
here is the next question so again i'll give you a minute think about it put your answers in the chat and then we'll discuss Okay, so uh, we have a couple of responses. A pencil uh, is the first response, which is correct. Uh, so technically it is not pencil, but the lead, uh, which is inside the pencil, right? So pencil is the wooden case here. So yes, the lead that we use inside the pencil, that is the correct answer, right? So yes, perfect. Uh, that is the correct one. Uh, here is the third question. So again, I'll give you a minute. Think about it. And then um, we'll discuss the answer. Uh, also, so if, if you're not able to join into Zoom, that's not a problem. I have YouTube open on the side as well. So I'm looking at all the comments coming on YouTube live as well, as well as Zoom chat. So no matter where you are attending from, you can definitely just type it in the chat. And I'm looking at both, uh, both chats side by side. So yes, don't worry about, you know, even if you're not able to join in, it's not a problem. Uh, I have both the chats open side by side. Okay, we have a couple of responses. Let's check. So, um, key uh, key is not the correct answer. Uh, but yes, photography. Yes, photography is the correct answer. So, um, basically, the correct answer here is A is shooting B. By shooting, we mean taking a picture of B, right? So, yes, uh, A is a photographer and B is the model. So, A is shooting the model. And um, the reason why this is the correct answer is because uh, if you go back to the traditional way in which photography was done, where we had like a reel and a camera set up, right? Where the reel was then produced into becoming the final image. That is what um, we mean by this. So yes, that is why that is the correct answer, right? Perfect. So photography is the correct answer. A is taking a photo of B. Um, whoever answered that is on point. Well done. Uh, great. Now the next bit is where we'll do a quick recap of what we've already discussed in the first session. So in case you missed it, um, here's a quick refresher. In case you were there again, here's a quick um, you know, recap of what was covered. So we focused on three important things in the first session. Uh, the first was understanding a few terms, right? So we talked about a couple of different terms uh, associated with web development. So we talked about what is a website, what is a web app, then the difference between web design, web development. We have talked about all of these terms, right? We have understood those in detail. And now uh, then we finalize that we are going to focus on the Mern stack in this course, right? So this internship is where the full stack development is where we will be focusing on the Mern stack. So the Mern stands for MongoDB, Express, React, and Node. These are the four technologies that we're going to cover where of course react is our front end. So react will help us build everything that the users can see and interact with. Then we have MongoDB express and node, which will be our backend. So this is everything that the users will not be able to see, but where we do all our functionality. And then of course, MongoDB is the 
database right so these are the four things that we are going to learn one by one um react express node and mongodb this will be the order so we'll start with react then we'll move to node then express and then finally mongodb that's going to be the order in which we learn these technologies uh, the second thing that we discussed in that session uh, in the previous session was the journey of a website or basically the web development life cycle uh, we also call it sdlc right that software development life cycle so we discussed that there are six major steps in this process uh, where the first step is requirements engineering this is where we um, you know take a look at or figure out what are the features that we need to build so that is step one right what is going to be uh, built or what is required in the system that is requirements engineering again when we start building a project when we create a project we'll discuss this in more detail we'll understand what an srs document is we'll talk about all of those things but basically requirements engineering is figuring out what needs to be built once that is done then we move to the second step wireframing which is where the ui ux part comes in right so ui ux uh, is basically designing the website or designing the application so that is wireframing once the design is ready then we move to development development is where we write the code so there is front-end development back-end development uh, in front-end we write the front-end code of course in back-end we write the back-end code then there is a term full stack development so full stack development basically means that the developer can create the entire application on their own right which is that they are capable of writing the front end also back end also and database also so that is what we are aiming to become right if we can write everything on our own if we can create the entire application that makes us a full stack developer right now the next thing after development is testing so naturally testing is making sure um, everything works as expected so that is testing then we have deployment deployment is putting the system to use so again, uh, if it's a mobile application, it would mean putting it on the Google Play Store. If it's an iPhone application, it would mean putting it on the iOS, which is the Apple Store. Um, if it is a website, it would mean deploying it to a server where we can get the link from and we can give the link to our users. Right? That is deployment. Finally, we have uh, maintenance. Maintenance is the last step, which is where we take care of everything that happens after deployment. So this could include you know bug fixes it could include adding new features everything everything that happens after something goes live that is what we have as maintenance right so this is uh, the second thing that we discussed in the previous session and finally the third thing was a list of tools that we need right so i am hoping at this point in today's session everybody who was there in the previous session you already knew this so I am hoping that you have already installed uh, all of these tools in your system, right? Again, the installation document was already sent and uh, hopefully you have installed these as instructed. Uh, if you have installed them, just let me know, just put a yes in the chat so that I know that the setup is done or you are ready with this. Um, For today, we just need Visual Studio Code and Google Chrome. But then again, for the rest of the course, we do need the other tools as well. So I am hoping that all of the installation is done. And like we discussed, right, you need to have a laptop for this. So all of those questions were already resolved. So yes, uh, in if you have already installed these tools, just put something in the chat, ready, yes, installed, something like that, so that I know that you've installed these things. And then we'll jump into today's agenda, which is talking about HTML in detail. All right, and if you haven't installed these, uh, please take a screenshot of this on the screen right now. Just take a screenshot and you should be able to uh, just Google them. It's very simple, just Google. It will be the first link that shows up and install them, right? These are the six tools that we need. For now, we only need uh, Visual Studio Code and Google Chrome for the next two, three sessions. After that, we are going to require the rest of the tools as well. Right. So uh, please make sure that you're installing these tools. And um, what I will also do is uh, towards the end of the session today, I will also send you the document link. I'll put it on um, GitHub or somewhere. I'll give you a link 
which will help you with the installation. So in case you haven't received the document yet, um, I will give you the link at the end of the session today, right? So please make sure that you take the link before you leave the session, um, right? That is going to be important because you need the tools to work, right? Perfect. So now for today, we are going to need two things. We need Visual Studio Code and Google Chrome. I already have both of them installed. And then the language that we're going to learn today is called HTML, right? Can anybody tell me the full form of HTML? Also, please note that all of these tools are free, right? There is no payment needed for any of these tools. All of these tools are free to install and free to use. So uh, make sure that you're not paying anything anywhere. These are all free tools. So yes, can anybody tell me what HTML is? Perfect. So uh, all of you know the answer already. It is hypertext markup language. Right? So HTML stands for hypertext markup language and HTML HTML has only one task, right? Only one task, which is allow us to add content to the web page. That's it, right? So whenever you visit any web page, you might have noticed that there are so many different types of content that we have, right? For example, we have text, we have images, we have videos, we have audios, we have um, paragraphs and tables and forms and buttons, all of these things, right? So all of this content is added to the page using HTML. That is the only task that HTML has, right? It is going to let us as developers add content to the web page. That's it. That is what HTML is all about. Now, how HTML works again is very simple. HTML works with something called tags and attributes. Right? I'm pretty sure most of you might have uh, some experience with HTML. It's actually a pretty simple language, but again, we'll discuss it in detail today. So tags and attributes are is how HTML basically works, right? Um, you can see a quick example on the screen as well. I will switch to VS Code in a few minutes and I will give you live demo of the code as well. But you can see a simple example on the screen right now. So we have tag name and then style is equal to property, right? This basically is a simple HTML tag. So tag name will change and style equal to property is the attribute. Um, attribute basically provide more information about a tag. So there are some tags, for example, links or images where we need to specify additional things like how big the image should be or where should the link connect you to. In all of these cases, we have to provide some additional information along with the tag that is basically your tag name or that is basically your attribute, right? Now, there are different types of tags available in HTML. For example, we have text tags. There are different ways of adding text in HTML. So we'll look at them one by one now, right? <clears throat> so the first category of tags that we are going to focus on are text tags in HTML. And there are six broad um, differentiation or six broad categories for these text tags, right? So all the way from headings to paragraphs and other things, I'll go through this one by one while giving you a demo on the screen. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share the entire screen with you that you should be able to see the entire screen now. And as you can see, I have two parts to the screen. The left half is where we'll write the code and the right half obviously is where we'll see the output. So I have just set it up um, such that we we'll write the code on the left hand side and we'll see the output on the right hand side. Perfect. The very first thing that we have to do when working with an HTML project or whenever we create any HTML code is to create a file with the extension .html, right? So as you can see here, my file extension, if I can just zoom in just so that you can see, my file extension here is index.html. So index is typically the name that we give to the first page of our website which is what we also call the home page or the landing page, right? So typically we call it index.html. That is the name that we give to the first page on our um, website. In addition to this, of course, we can have other pages. 
for example we can have about page contact page um, you know team page etc etc support page etc so we can create separate html files for all of these pages and we can give those whatever name we want but for the very first page it is very important that the name has to be index right the reason for this is because this is the file that the browser will load in the very beginning. So whenever you open up a website, the first page that is loaded is the index page. After that, you can connect to any other page that you want, but this will always be the first page that shows up. Okay. So that is why we have to give it the name index index.html. That is the mandatory name that we have to give to the landing page or the home page. Um, Again, it is a standard interview question in a lot of cases, you know, we ask students, um, you know, what is um, the name that we give or can I call this home.html or can I call the first page landing.html? The answer is no, you cannot call it anything else but index. Index.html has to be the name. I mean, index has to be the name for the home page. There can be no other name for the first page. If you do not have any file called index.html or if you do not have any page with this name, then the browser will give you an error. It will not load up the website, right? Because the first thing the browser is looking for is this page. So if this page is not available, then basically we will not be able to see anything on the website, right? So uh, I hope that is clear. The first page on the website has to be index. That's it. Now, let's take a quick look at an HTML tag. So how an HTML tag works is there are two types of tags. The first tag are called tag pair or double tags. And then the second category is a single tag. Single tags are also called self-closing. We call them self-closing tags, right? So this is a single tag. Uh, this is the name for a single tag. And then we have double tag or this is the name we give to normal tags. So most of the HTML tags follow this approach or this pattern where we have an opening, uh, there's an opening tag and there's a closing tag, right? And then on the other hand, there are some special tags which are called self-closing tags, which are basically, like I said, self-closing. So they don't need any additional tag at the end. I'll give you examples of both of them uh, one by one. But all the text tags that are available standard uh, tags available to put text. They are all double tags or tag pairs. How this works is like so. So we have the tag name, right? Like this. And this is the closing tag. And the content comes in over here. Right. So uh, this is how it basically looks like. So we have the opening tag, then we have some content in between, and then we have the closing tag. So this is the basic structure of a double tag um, that is available in HTML. Now for working with headings, right? What we can do is we have H1 through H6. There are six different heading tags that are available in HTML, right? H1 through H6. How that works is this. So we have H1. Let me just copy paste it six times and I will just modify the names like so. So four, five, six, right? So two, three, four, five, and six. And then of course, I will just add some content for all of them. So I'll just add this in all of these. And then I will just refresh the output so we can see how these six tags show up. So I'm zooming in here. As you can see, there are six different styles or six different headings that have shown up over here, right? So the first thing that we see here is H1 and H1, as you can see, is the biggest name that is available in HTML, uh, the biggest heading available in HTML. Then this is a slightly smaller and even more smaller all the way down to H6, which is the smallest heading that HTML supports, right? So H1 through H6, biggest to smallest. 
right? So H1 is the bigger one, H6 is the smaller one, and then the others are in between. Now, uh, one of the standard questions that a lot of people generally ask is, why do we have so many headings? Right? Why can't we just have one heading or two headings? For that, the uh, motivation or the reason comes from research papers. So initially, HTML was created with the purpose of putting research papers online, right? And if you look at a college research paper or any, any university research paper, you would know that there are different parts to the research paper. We have the title of the paper, then we have the name of the people, there's a subtitle and then section and subsection and uh, bibliography and all of those things, right? So this is... Uh, basically the same. That is the reason why we have six different headings. The inspiration for this comes from a research paper. So typically in a research paper, we have six different heading styles. That is where this comes from. So this is the first thing that we have in terms of text in HTML headings. The next thing that we can add, of course, are paragraphs. And this is what a paragraph looks like. Very simple. We have the opening P tag. So P is for paragraph and then the closing P tag. And then, of course, we can have whatever content we want over here. Uh, let me just enable word wrap. There we go. So this is some content that I've put in in a paragraph. If I just refresh, um, you can see that this is the paragraph and it shows up on the page now. Right. So this is the second text piece or the second type of content that we can add as text in HTML, which is a paragraph. Uh, is it clear so far? Is it making sense? Right. Perfect. So um, at this point, I am assuming that people who are attending today, um, some of you at least might have installed the software that was needed. If you have not installed it, I am going to put a link in the chat. And what I want you to do is just open it up so that you can also practice with me parallelly. Right. So I will just put the link in the chat. Just give me one minute. Um, there you go. I've put the link in the chat a couple of times. Uh, please take it from there. And I'm also putting it in the YouTube chat as well. So what I want you to do is in case you don't have the software, just open this up. It is called jsfiddle.net. Right. I'm just putting the link in YouTube uh, chat as well. Uh, yes. So what I want you to do is just go ahead, open this up. And when you open it up, you will see an HTML section over here. The first section that you see is going to be an HTML section. And I just want you to type the code out directly over here. You can see HTML and there is a run button. So whatever code you want to type in, you can just type it and then click on run. This will produce the output in the bottom right hand side, as you can see. If you already have Visual Studio Code installed or any other tool installed, please feel free to use it. No problem. In case you have not installed anything for now, what you can do is head over to this website, jsfiddle.net. Head over there and you can practice for now, just for this session, you can practice. So there is an HTML section where you can type the code. Then there's a run on the top left. Just click on that and it will uh, basically open it up on the side. So the link is jsfiddle.net. I have put this in the chat once again, in case you want it. So please go ahead and open it up and I will leave this code on the screen. I'll give you guys five minutes. I want you to quickly try this out, right? So I'll just give you five minutes for this. You can quickly try this code out and then we'll proceed to the next couple of tags in HTML, right? You are not going to get any email for this. The link is in the chat. The link is called JS Fiddle. As you can see on my screen, jsfiddle.net. This is the link. I will keep it here as well. JS Fiddle. Please open this up. And when you open this up, you can go ahead and try the code out. So the link is also on the screen. The code is also on the screen. I'll give you five minutes quickly. Try this out and then we'll move to the next part.
okay and the time is up so hopefully everybody has tried this out right uh, i gave you a quick um, time slot just so that you know all of you also know or get to know about the syntax and just get a brief idea so with the assumption or with the hope that this is done uh, let's move to the next couple of tags so so far what we have done is we have talked about headings and paragraphs right so these are two things that we have discussed uh, in html the next major type of text that we can add to HTML are lists. Again, we see lists all the time, right? Uh, we have ordered lists, we have unordered lists. We, we see lists all the time. Top five things, top 10 things, you know, top 20 things. Uh, we see lists all the time uh, on web pages. That is what we'll take a look at next. So now let's move to adding lists in HTML. Again, I'm going to head over to Visual Studio Code and start working with this. Now, um, the list that we can add, there are two types of lists. Like I said, the first type of list are called ordered lists. And then the second type of lists are called unordered. So that is the tag again, ordered lists are OL and unordered lists are UL, right? So ordered list and unordered list. Now within this, for every list, right, what we have is LI. Right. So LI stands for list item. This is what we can put. And then inside LI, we can put any content that we want. So heading, paragraph, any other content that you want, image, which we'll discuss later. Any valid HTML content um, can be added within this LI tag. Right. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a paragraph here. And let's just say this is item one. I will copy paste this. I will say item two and item three, right? Similarly, so let me just reduce the space by putting it in the same line so that we can see both the lists on the screen at the same time. And I'm going to similarly put the same LI setup for the other list as well, right? So I'll just copy this and paste it over here. So we have two lists, ordered list and then unordered list. I'll go back to the browser and I will refresh. As you can see immediately when I refresh, these two different types of lists show up over here, right? So the first category is where we have one, two, three. These are ordered lists as obviously there is an order one, two, three. And then the second category are unordered lists. So unordered lists are bullet points basically, right? That is what we can uh, put. Now we can, of course, modify this. So instead of one, two, three, we can have characters like ABC. Uh, we can have Roman numerals if we want. Similarly, over here, uh, we can have bullets. We can have empty bullets. We can have squares. We can have other symbols as well. But all of the styling will be done with CSS, right? All of the styling will be done with CSS. So we'll discuss that part when we discuss CSS. For now, this is how we create the two types of lists. So ordered list and unordered list. That is the third uh, type of content or third type of text tag that we can add lists in HTML, right? Again, just let me know if it is clear. Uh, just put a clear or understood or yes in the chat uh, just so that I know it is clear and we'll move to the next bit, uh, which is where we discuss some formatting uh, for these text tags. Right, perfect. So I'm trying to go a little bit slow today uh, because I want everybody to follow along and understand. And once we start understanding, we can probably pick up, you know, a little more speed later on in the sessions. But for now, I'm going very slow. Um, hopefully you're understanding this properly. Great. Now the lists are done. We'll move to formatting and we'll discuss formatting majorly with a paragraph only because um, that will make a lot more sense. Now, when it comes to formatting, right, um, what we cannot, uh, what we can do or what we use it for is to highlight some part of the text, right? So for example, let us say that we want to highlight or make this bold. So to make it bold, we have the tag called B. It's very simple, B for bold. And we just have to wrap it like this, right? And as soon as I refresh, you will see this D-O-L-O-R, this becomes bold in style. So it looks, it, uh, you know, highlights. It does not look like the rest of the text. It is now bold. 
that is what we can do with the b tag right that is the bold and again html tags this also tells us that html tags can be nested in each other for example the b tag is inside the paragraph tag Right. So that is another feature that HTML tags have. They can be nested within each other. Right. Just like we have the bold, we also have two other styles available, which is italics and underline. So for italics, what we do is we use the I tag again, very simple. I for italics. Right. So that and then for underline, we use U. So again, very obvious U for underline. So this is what we have. Again, let me refresh. And you will now see that this is now italicized, which means slanted. And then this one is underlined as you can see, right? So these are the three common formatting tags that we have available in HTML, bold, italic, and underlined. Right now, in addition to this, so this was how things used to work in HTML. Okay, before I tell you that, uh, here's a quick question for you. What is the latest version of HTML that is out there? Does anybody know what is the latest version of HTML that we have? Perfect. The latest version is HTML5, right? 5 is the latest version. So these tags were actually introduced in HTML uh, before HTML5 and they used to work till HTML4. With HTML5, what they have done is they've introduced something called semantic tags. Right? There's a new term, semantic, that is um, semantic, like so, right? semantic tags. Semantic tags basically mean that there is some meaning associated with the tag. So they basically, these tags are just, uh, you know, modifications of existing tags to make the code better or more meaningful in that sense, right? So um, there were two tags which were replaced in HTML5. So we are not supposed to use the B tag anymore for bolding, but instead we have a tag called strong. It does the exact same thing. There is literally no visual difference. If I reload the screen, you will not see any difference. It does the exact same thing. It will also just bold the text, right? But when you look at the code, this somehow is more meaningful, right? So strong is more meaningful than B. Strong means something. B does not mean anything. That is what they said, right? So when HTML5 was introduced, they um, came up with this concept of semantic tags. And that is where strong tag came up. Uh, similarly, for italics, we have another tag called EM. EM stands for emphasis, right? So emphasis is focus. Emphasis in English means focus. Again, visually, there is no difference at all. It does the exact same thing. As you can see, when I refresh the output, there is no change. And again, there is no shortcut that I'm using for the browser output. I'm going to the browser and I'm reloading it. So control R to reload. That is what I'm doing. We'll set up the shortcuts later. Once everybody has the tools installed, I don't want to confuse anyone right now. So I'm just adding the code here, going to the browser and reloading the browser. That is how you can see the update, right? Um, perfect. So yes, uh, these are the three formatting tags that we have. So strong, EM and U. All right, make sense, clear? What we can also do is we can use them with the same piece of text. So for example, let us say that we want this part to be everything. Then we can just wrap it in everything. So we can say strong, first of all. Then within this, we can put EM, of course. right? Then within this, we can put EM. And then the text can go inside that. So this way, if I refresh, you will see the text is now bold also. It is italics also, and it is underlined also. So this is how we can use all of them together. Right? So that is also something that is obviously possible. And these are some styling, some formatting tags that HTML provides us. Of course, there is a lot more that we can do. Uh, for example, we can change the font, we can increase the size, we can change the color, but all of those things will happen with CSS, right? So CSS is what we use to style everything. HTML is just for adding the content, right? Just for adding the content. Perfect. So this is what we have in terms of formatting in HTML. 
Now let's quickly move to the next part. So the next bit that we are focusing on in terms of content is comments in HTML. Right? So formatting is done. Now we are moving to comments. Uh, a comment is a very important part of any programming language, right? Comments allow us to do two things. Now, number one, comments allow us to leave notes for ourselves. So that is one. Number two, comments allow us to, um, you know, uh, test different pieces of code, right? So the, these are two of the most important tasks uh, or things that comments let us do. So in HTML also, you can see the format here. It's a special tag that is available. And the format is like this. So let me put it at the very top here. So we have less than exclamation dash dash, right? This is the opening of the comment. And then we have dash dash greater than this is the closing of the comment. And whatever we write in here, this is all comment. So the browser will not treat this comment as a part of the code. Comment is ignored, right? The browser will simply ignore the comment. Right. So if I just refresh the browser again, you will see there is nothing being displayed for this comment. We directly start with H1. So obviously comments are ignored by the browser. Right? Comments are simply ignored by the browser. We use it for two things. Like I said, if you want to test a certain part of the code, for example, let's say that we just want to test the paragraph. What we can do is we can comment all the headings, right? So what I can do is I can put the comment tag like this and this will comment out all the headings. Now headings will not show up in the output. So I can isolate a certain part of the code and I can test it out using comments. This is the second most important um, use of comments. The first of course is leaving notes. So whenever we are writing some logic which is um, unique, whenever we are updating something, we can write comments to tell what is going on. Again, when we start working on a project, I'll tell you how to use comments or how to write comments in more detail. But these are the two primary tasks of a comment, right? Number one, um, leaving notes for ourselves. And number two, testing specific parts of the code. So we can isolate what we want by commenting out everything else so that we can focus on that part of the code and we can use those as comments. Uh, or we can test that by keeping everything else as a comment. Right. So these are comments in HTML. Uh, let me uncomment this. And yes, we are back with our headings. Um, is this clear so far? We'll just discuss one more thing and then take questions. I know there are probably a couple of questions by now, but there's one final text tag, which we'll quickly discuss, which are these miscellaneous tags. And then we'll take questions uh, if you guys have any. Right. So these miscellaneous tags allow us to do two things. Number one is the line break, which is the BR tag. And then number two is the HR, which is horizontal rule. Let me show you how these work. So if you focus on the paragraph over here, right, let us assume that I want to have a new line. Let's say after this um, AMET, what I want is the rest of this content should go to the next line. So what we can do is we can just do this, right? We can just try to put as many lines as we want here in VS code. But if you refresh the browser, if you save this and refresh the browser, nothing will change, right? So what happens is there are two types of programming languages out there. Um, the first type of language is what we call white space sensitive, right? So we call them white space sensitive. Python is a good example. White space sensitive languages are those languages where white spaces matter a lot. So every white space that you put is considered a part of the code. And in Python, you will get errors and right? you will get errors because of inappropriate white spaces. However, in the HTML case or in most other programming languages, we call them white space insensitive. What that means is no matter how many spaces you put in the code, it is not going to matter. So as you can see, we have put five lines here with a comment. None of this is mattering in the output. The output still remains the same, right? So that is where we have HTML. It's called white space insensitive. So what we have instead, uh, what they have provided instead is this tag called the BR tag. So what the BR tag does is they, it basically replicates or mimics the enter key on our keyboard. Right. So the tag looks like this BR 
and this is a special tag which is a self closing tag because obviously we don't have any content to put in this tag so this is how we can self close it right so we have this slash before the closing bracket and this is the self closing tag if i refresh now you will see this content now move to the next line so that is what the br tag does it basically replicates the enter key on the keyboard we call it the line break line break or the br tag this is the line break finally we have the tag called hr so this hr tag again is a single tag or a self closing tag and what this does is it puts a line on the screen as you can see a horizontal rule it goes on from the left end of the screen all the way through the right end of the screen that is what the hr tag does the horizontal rule hr so br is line break hr is horizontal rule br will put the content on the next line as you can see over here the consent term goes to the next line and then the hr will draw a line basically from one end of the page to the other end of the page right and of course if you put one more br then it will add a, add an extra line um, over here so it will just create an empty line and again as many brs as you put like as you can put those many lines will be shown up will show up in the output as you can see right so these are the two tags the hr and the br tag so again the br tag puts lines or you know is called the line break it replicates the enter key and then the hr tag basically puts a horizontal line or horizontal rule from one end of the page to the other end of the page um i hope you know the term ruler right so r u l e r the scale that we use for drawing things or sketching things um that is called a ruler right so that is um the ruler part that's why it's called horizontal rule that scale that we used to draw that is uh, called a rule a ruler so this is horizontal rule line on the screen right now some of you might have noticed i have received this in the chat also that we don't necessarily need we don't necessarily need this end slash uh, this br will work as the same as this one right so basically in self closing tags this is something that html does provide Uh, a little bit of flexibility that html does provide which is that we can skip this optional slash this is optional but it is good programming practice to put it similarly if i remove this from hr you will see output will not change we will still get the hr but this is not good when you start working with react you will realize that you will start getting errors because of this so if it is just html it will work but if you use it in any framework like react or angular then this becomes mandatory otherwise it will give you an error and not work as expected right so yes these are all the different text tags that we have available in html so again uh, we have h1 to h6 these are our heading tags then we have p which is our paragraph then we have two types of lists right ordered lists unordered lists and then the li tag is of course the list item right then we have some tags for formatting so bold italics underline strong is the same as bold and em is the same as uh, italics which is i then we have comments comments have a special syntax so less than exclamation dash dash and then the comment and then dash dash greater than that is how we end a comment everything in between the comment is basically um will be ignored by the browser so everything that that is a comment will be ignored by the browser it will not show up in the output finally we have the miscellaneous tags we have two tags the br tag and the hr tag the br tag is the line break which replicates the enter key on the keyboard and then finally the hr tag which is a horizontal rule or line that shows up from one end of the page to the other end of the page right so yes that is um those are all the text tags that we have discussed so far and yes at this point of time before we continue uh, let's take a quick couple of questions if you have any regarding these text tags so um i will i am looking at both the chats i have youtube chat open i have zoom chat open uh, whatever doubts or questions you have we'll take 5 minutes you can put them in the chat now even if you have posted a question earlier please put it again because i can't scroll up so much to find it so in case you have asked something earlier but i haven't answered it please put it in the chat again and i'm going to quickly answer all of that and then we'll move to the next part uh, which is linking in html how to add links 
right uh, to quickly recap simply html stands for hypertext markup language but uh, this is the language that we use to add content to the page right so all sorts of content that we see including images audio video um, paragraph everything that we see is added on the screen with html right uh, we have created the file called .html. So the first file uh, has to be named index. That is how the browser works. The browser does not give you option. There's only one option. The file has to be called index. That's it. The extension is .html. Another possible extension is .htm. So even if you just put .htm, it will still work. But HTML is the generally used ex uh, extension. So that is what we prefer. So make sure you put .html always, right? Then we have talked about all of these different types of text tags, uh, all the way from, you know, headings to paragraphs to lists and other things. Um, yes, shortcut for comments. The shortcut is control slash. So the slash key, if you are using a MacBook, that's command slash. On a Windows machine, it is control slash. So you can toggle comments uh, with that control slash, right? Uh, yes. So a lot of you are asking for repeating the HR tag. So the HR tag, basically what it does is it simply adds a line on the screen. Very simple. So as of now, you can see there is no line here. So if you want to separate two parts of the page, right? separate two sections of the page, we add this HR. HR stands for horizontal rule. So if I just refresh now, you will see this line shows up. So from one end of the screen, left end to the right end, this is what the HR tag does, right? So it stands for horizontal rule, which is just a line to separate two parts of the page. Visually, it creates a separation. This is one part. This is the other part. Uh, a lot of you are also asking about semantics. So the term semantic tag basically was introduced in HTML5. So semantic semantic tag right this term was introduced in html5 and there are several other tags which we will discuss later which be, which also belong to this category of semantic tags but um, basically so far we have discussed only two semantic tags semantic tags are tags that are meaningful or that are um, that add more meaning to the code basically so the strong tag is a semantic tag because it means something strong it basically says that whatever text is strong is more important than the rest of the text, right? So this bold text that we can see here is probably this bold text, right? That we see here is probably more important than the other parts of the text. For example, this text, since it is bold or strong, it is more important. It just gives us that meaning, right? Similarly, the EM tag here stands for emphasis. So emphasis in English meaning focus. Right. Emphasis in simple English means focus. So EM tag basically is for italics like this, as you can see, right? This is italic slanted text. That is what the EM tag lets us create. So again, you can see one more example over here. Right. This uh, Riku Sande, whatever that text is, this is emphasized. It is slanted. So it is focused. Again, this means that it is more important than the rest of the uh, content. So this meaning is what is semantic. That is what the term semantic means. It simply means meaningful tags, tags that make the code more meaningful. It is not just random code, but actually it is giving us some meaning. It is telling us that whatever is strong is probably more important. Whatever is in EM is probably more important, that kind of stuff. So that is what semantic tags are. Um, the headings work from H1 through H6. So we cannot really, you know, tell you why they are decreasing. That is how the team has made it. So the people who made HTML, they decided that H1 is going to be the biggest heading and H6 is going to be the smallest heading. So this was decided by the team. There is no logical explanation for why H1 is bigger or why H6 is smaller. It is just how it is. It, we can't really control or change it. Okay, perfect. So these are some of the questions. I think um, I've covered most of the questions in the chat. Yes, so I think I've covered most of the questions. If there is anything else, again, we'll uh, cover, we'll take another round of questions um, in some time. But these are just a few tags, right? This is the first couple of tags um, that we have discussed, which are for adding text. Quickly, let's move to the next part now. 
So the next uh, set of tags that we are focusing on are links in HTML. And again, as you might probably realize, links are a very important part. Um, so yes, we will talk about the structure of HTML at the end. First, we have to understand all the tags that we have, and then we'll discuss the structure at the end, right? Um, so now the next category of tags are links, right? And again, links in HTML are uh, very important. They connect us from one part to the other. And in HTML, we have three different types of links. As you can see on the screen, uh, the first type of link is linking to an external website. So this is where we link outside. Let's say go to Google, link to email, link to some other website that is linking. Uh, then the second type of link is internal. Let's say we have two pages, home page and about page or home page and contact page. And we are linking between them. That is the second type of link. Then the third type of link is linking to a section on the same page. So let us say that you have different sections on the page and you want the user to scroll down when you click on something. Imagine it is a one page website like your portfolio and you're giving some options at the top. There's a menu at my projects, education, this, that. So you click on that. It will scroll on the same page. That is the third type of link linking to a section on the same page. These are the only three types of links that are possible in HTML and it serves most of the purposes. These serve 99% of uh, what we really need when it comes to uh, links, right? So let's start with the very first one, which is linking to an external website. Let me give you an example of that. Uh, the tag for links that is available in HTML is the A tag, right? Now there is a story behind this, why the name is actually A. And this comes from ships. Right. So um, when like in the olden days, even today it happens, most of the transport still happens on ships via sea. Right. So um, these ships have something called an anchor. And this anchor is basically connected to the shore when the ship wants to rest. Right? So let's say that the ship has reached the destination and it wants to stop there. So to link the ship to the shore, we put an anchor. Anchor is this really heavy piece of metal which is put down and the ship stays grounded because of that. That is the inspiration for the A tag. And that is why links in HTML are A, right? Uh, there is nothing, there is something called a link tag, but that is not for this purpose. Uh, we'll discuss that with CSS. But for linking to an external website or all of these three link categories, we have something called the A tag. This A tag is the anchor tag, right? It's called anchor. Again, like I said, the name anchor comes from ships that uh, anchor or link to the shore using the anchor basically. So that is the A tag. Now, uh, the way this A tag works is we have to put the opening and closing. Between this, we put whatever content should show up. So again, anything can be a link, right? Text can be linked, image can be a link, anything that we want um, that should be clickable should go between this opening and closing A tag. So for example, for now, let me just put go to Google. Very simple. This is my A tag. Then in addition to just specifying the content, we also need to tell the browser where should it go, right? Where should you actually take the user when they click on it? For this, we have an attribute. Attribute is called href. Href stands for hypertext reference. This is basically the internet address where we should go. So if you want to connect to an external website, we have HTTPS, for example, slash slash www.google.com. This entire thing is important. If you don't write HTTP, it will not work, right? If we just write www.google.com, it will not work. It will give you an error. It will try to find this within our project, which is not there, right? So if whenever we want to connect to an external site, external site, right? whenever we want to connect to an external site, it is important that we have to put HTTPS or HTTP either way. And that is the only time when it will connect to an external page. So as you can see, it shows up in blue and it is underlined. When I click on it, it will take us to google.com, which means our link is working perfectly fine. This is how we connect to an external page, right? Let's say, for example, I put in LMS link, right? And that LMS link is uh, tap tap dot uh, 
for example it, i don't know the exact link but let us assume that this is the link so again um let me go back here and reload Uh, okay, let me just check what is going on. Yes, there you go. Um, I don't know what went wrong, but yes, now you can see the content has been modified to LMS link, right? So when you click on this, it will again, since it is Google, it will take us to Google. And similarly, you can put any other link. So this is how we can connect to an external site, right? Now, when it comes to the second category, internal, internal connection, right? So for internal connection, first of all, we need to have two pages. So let us quickly create another page, right? So I'll just make another page about.html. For instance, now we have two pages, index and about. In the about page, I will just add about page, right? That's it. I've just added about page one line just to know that we're going to the right page. Now, when it comes to the internal connection, we just have to put the file path. So we can just put about.html, done, right? We don't have to put HTTPS, that would tell the browser that we are looking at an internal file and we don't want to connect to an external page. This will tell the browser that this is an internal site. So if I just refresh, let's rename this to about page. For example, if I just refresh, you will see now that we have about page showing up. And when I click on this, it will take us to the about page. How do we know that? Well, our about page just contains one H1, which is about page. So this is taking us over there. Let's put this back over here as well. And this time I will put it back to index, right? So what I will do is I will link this back to index.html and call it home page. So now the link will show up on the about page. As you can see, it's home page. So when I click on home page, I go back to index. I click on about page. I go back to about, back to home, back to about. We can keep doing this all day, right? So this is how internal links work. This is how we are linking to an internal page, right? Is that clear? We have discussed two things so far. We have discussed external linking and internal linking. Is this clear so far? There is one more type of link which I will talk about next. But for now, these are the two things that we have discussed. Right. Okay. I'll quickly repeat. So um, how things work in HTML when it comes to links are we have three different types. I'll show you the third one in a minute. But the tag is the link tag, uh, the A tag that is used for links. So what we have to put is we have the opening and the closing A tag and whatever here is, whatever is there inside here is the clickable part, right? Now, whenever we want to connect to an external page, which means outside our project, right? Outside our project. So for example, like here we are connected to Google, to another application, to some other things, then we are using an external connection. Whenever we want to connect to an external page, we have to use HTTPS. If we don't put this, for example, if I just remove this and refresh and I click on this, it will not work. You will see it is not going anywhere. This link is not working, right? So it is important that we have to put HTTPS. As soon as I put that in, you will see it takes us to Google, right? So it is important that we have to put HTTPS when we are connecting to a resource outside our um, set up outside our project that is right. Then the next thing that we have here is an internal thing. So internal basically means we are linking within our project. So let's say we have 10 pages, 15 pages, 20 pages uh, within our project and we want to link within that. That is where we use internal. So for internal, we do not have to put HTTPS. We just have to give the file name or the path to the page. So here, since they are on the same page, in the same folder, index and, index and about, we don't have to put anything, just about.html and we are good, right? Finally, what we have is we have within the page, linking within the page. This is something that a lot of people don't really cover, but this is an advanced concept. So let me actually show you um, how this works, right? So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to put in a couple of dummy 
pieces just so that our page becomes a little lengthier, right? So I'm just going to copy paste a couple of paragraphs um, just to add some more content to the page. And yes, now you can see the page is crawlable, right? The page becomes crawlable. I have just added some dummy content. So for linking within the page, the first thing that we have to do is go to the part where we want to link it and we have to give it an ID, right? So for example, let us say that we want to connect to this list. So what I can do is I can give it an ID. Let's call it order list. You can call it whatever you want. Doesn't really matter. I am just giving it an ID. This is how the browser will know where we are supposed to go. Now let's go to the top of the page. And over here, what I will do is after the headings, let us say I'm adding the link. I will say go to list. Okay, go to list. And then here, what I can do is I can say hash and then the ID. So hash, um, I will just copy the ID so that I don't do spelling mistakes. So this is something that you should also keep in mind whenever you're working with something, you know, <coughs> whenever you're working with things within the project, make sure you copy paste names so that you don't do spelling mistakes. Perfect. Now let us see what happens. So I'm going to click on this go to list. What it should do is it should automatically scroll us down to this part. So as of now, the list is not in view. I'm going to click on this and you can see immediately that it scrolls down. Let me show you once again. So I am at the top of the page. Now the list is not visible. What I will do is I will click on this button. Go to list. This is a link that I've created internal link or you know this is within the page link if i click here you can see it will scroll down to the list so um if i just add a couple of things after the list also this will become much more clear uh, right so i've just added a couple of things after the list also now if i click on that let's go back to go to list you will see that the list shows up at the top Right. So again, if I click on go to list, it takes us down to that list. This is linking within the page, right? So those are the three different types of links that we can create in HTML. First up, we have linking to an external web page. This is where we have to specify HTTPS. Without it, this will not work. Then there is the second type of link, which is linking to an internal web page. This is where we don't have to put HTTPS, just the path to the file. Right? That is internal. And then the third thing is linking to a section on the same page. For this, first, we have to create the ID. Right? We have to give ID to the section where we want to go. And then what we can do is we can uh, put the link. So that is how we can connect to the same, um, some other part of the same page. So usually when you see single page websites or one page websites, this is the kind of link that they use linking to a section on the same page. That is what um, they use, right? Perfect. Uh, let's take a couple of quick questions around links now. So if you have any questions around links, uh, please let me know and I'll quickly go ahead and, you know, answer them and then we'll move to the next part. So again, if you have any doubts or questions, uh, please put them in the chat now and I will help you out. Um, target element, I'll talk about that, explain. Okay, sure, uh, let me quickly explain the target element as well. So in addition to these two types of, uh, you know, the, the link tag, the href attribute, there is one more attribute that, um, you know, is very common when it comes to links and that is called the target attribute. Right. So now, right now, what happens is if I just click on a link, um, let me just again make some space here. So, yes. So right now, here are our two links, LMS and about. When I click on this link, you will see it loads up in the same page, right? So the link loads up in the same page. In a lot of cases, you might have seen that the link actually opens in a new tab. Right? So that is what the target attribute lets us do that uh, we can use it to specify whether we want the link to open in the same page or a different page or a different window. 
So for example, if I just put this over here, I put target is equal to underscore blank. This is the value. So if I put target is equal to underscore blank and I refresh, uh, what this link will do now is I will click on the link again. You will see our page is still intact and it opened in a new tab. Right? If I just click on it a couple of times, it will open so many tabs. So this is how the target attribute works. It allows us to open a link in a new tag, a new tab, right? So that is the target attribute. The value is underscore blank. So when you specify this, it will open the page in a new tab in the browser and not in the same tab. So a lot of companies do this so that the user at least stays on the same page and then open something on the side. So when you close off the other page, you are taken back to, or you still have this tab open. That is what a lot of companies use this for. So that is the target attribute. Right. I'm going back to the chat now to see if there are any more questions. Uh, the difference between external and internal link uh, is the HTTPS part. So in internal links, we have to specify the file name that we want to connect to. In external links, you have to specify the complete URL, the entire web address. That's the difference between the two. So in internal, we have to give the file name. In external, we have to give the complete URL. Right? So very simple. External is whenever we are connected to any third party service, right? Google, YouTube, Amazon, whenever we are redirecting somebody outside our uh, project. On the other hand, once we have internal, it basically means we are connecting to different pages from our project only. So from home to about page, about to contact page, that internal project is where we have internal connection. And of course, external is where we have external connection. Right. Uh, perfect. And about does not contain anything. There is just one H1 here and link to the home page. That is what the about file contains. Yes. So the reason why internal um, links don't require HTTPS is because HTTPS is where we want to go to the internet, right? HTTPS stands for hypertext transfer protocol. This basically means we want to find the resource on the internet. But when we are connecting to another part of the same project, we already have the resource available with us. We don't want to find it on the internet. That is why we don't put HTTPS over here. Whenever we want to go to any outside resource, which is on the internet, we have to put HTTPS. And for internal, we don't need that. Right? Perfect. Again, there are a couple of questions regarding other concepts that I'm skipping for now. So we will have one more session. Of course, we still haven't completed HTML, uh, but our time is up for today. Uh, we will still have one more session where we'll talk about um, you know, the remaining HTML tags. So we have images and tables and forms. Uh, we have all of those things to discuss as well. We'll talk about that in the next session. But yes, for now, we have talked about a lot of things today. Right? We have talked about headings in HTML. We have talked about paragraphs. So all the different text elements. And we have also talked about uh, you know, the um, links in HTML, which is again very important. So when it comes to links, we have two things that are important. Number one, the href. href stands for hypertext reference. This is basically the web address or the URL, right? Where do you want to go basically? So if it's an external site, it needs to be a web address. If it's an internal connection, then it needs to be the file path. Where is that file in your system? That is, or in your basically project. That is what you have to put over here. Uh, when it comes to linking within the same page, again, we have two steps. Step one, we have to first give the name, give the ID to a section where we want to connect. So this is where we connected, right? ID is equal to ordered list. This will tell the browser, this is the place where the link should go. So that is the ID. This is how we make it, right? Um, ID is the attribute and this is the name that we have given. You can give it any name that you want. I have given this. Right. So this is the ID. And then what we can do is we can specify the ID with a hash hash ID. So this hash will tell the browser that we are looking for within the page connection. And then where do you want to go within the page? This is the ID where you want to go. So hash ID, that is how it will work. Right. So these are the three different types of links um, that we have worked on right now. And yes, I think that is what we have for today. 
I'm going to quickly pull up a poll question. So we have two questions uh, for today uh, in the poll. I will launch them one by one. Uh, if you are on the YouTube live, you can just answer this in the chat. And if you are on Zoom, uh, please uh, you know answer the poll. Um, here is the first question on the screen now. Uh, also, for everybody who is asking about the attendance part, um, the idea is that the attendance link is sent on your email right, or on your WhatsApp. So there is no attendance link that I can provide you in the session. You have to give your attendance on email or through your uh, um, you know, uh, email or um, the um, WhatsApp group where you will get the link. So that is the only way to give attendance. I cannot give you a link to attendance here in the session. It is an automated link which shows up on, on your email or is shared on the WhatsApp group. So please use that link to give your attendance. I cannot send you a link um, here in the session. Right? Yes, I think um, so. Zoom is not sharing the question in the live stream. So that is why it is not uh, on YouTube. I will copy paste it in the chat for you. Uh, for people who are on YouTube, I will copy paste the question and send it to you over there. Perfect. Uh, here is the next question. So I'm ending this poll. The correct answer is HTTP. HTTPS protocol is missing. That was the correct answer for this question. Uh, I'm pulling up the next question now. So for people again who are on YouTube, I will put the question in the chat. Uh, please check it there and answer it from there. And uh, yes, here is the second question. So yes, for people on YouTube, just give me one second. I will put it uh, in the chat. Right. So for people who are on the YouTube chat, I have just put the question along with all the options in the chat. Uh, please answer that over there. And for people who are here on Zoom, you should be able to see the responses now. And uh, I will not share the correct answer. I'll give the YouTube people a minute to answer it. 
uh, before I share the correct answer. Um, so yes, I will just wait for one more minute for that. Uh, in the meanwhile, so that is you know more or less uh, it in terms of the content for the day. Uh, this is what I wanted to discuss for today. Again, we'll continue with HTML in the next session as well. Um, what we have also shared in the chat for both um, both Zoom and YouTube um, is the feedback link, right? So please go ahead and you know uh, make sure that you fill that feedback in. Uh, I think we'll just put it on the Zoom chat also in a minute. Um, so yes, you know, make sure, yes, the feedback link is here on Zoom as well. So please make sure you fill that in and, you know, um, you have the feedback also done before you leave the session. So just take a minute, um, fill that in as well. And yes, come into the correct answer for the question. So the correct answer um, again is option. Hold on, let me check the question again. Um, so the correct answer is option B, right? Linking to a file on uh, linking to a file on the system that is not possible. So option B is the correct answer, not option C. A lot of people have put in option C. That is not the correct answer. The correct answer is option B, right? Which is that they should not be. They cannot. You cannot connect to any other file. Uh, I cannot connect to any file on your system from my system. That is not how it works, right? So yes, um, internal, external, within the page, those are possible. And those are the only three possibilities uh, when it comes to links. All right, perfect. So that is it uh, for this session. I hope you guys uh, had um, you know a good time and you understood these concepts. Uh, we have primarily discussed text tags in HTML along with links in HTML. Those are the two topics that we have covered in this one. And yes, we'll continue with our HTML discussion in the next session. So the next session will be on Monday, six o'clock, right? So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, six o'clock is our next session. So please make sure that you, um, you know, are here on Monday. And uh, yeah, that is it for this one. Uh, again, I will get the code shared with you guys. The link will be shared again on the LMS. Uh, the slides will also be uploaded over there. The code links will also be uploaded over there. So yes, um, you can expect everything on the LMS. So make sure you have access to the LMS and you should be able to find everything over there. Right. Uh, perfect. So I think that is it for the day. Thank you so much guys for attending. I hope um, this was fun. And yeah, uh, let's, let's meet again on Monday and continue our discussion then. So yes, bye-bye. I'll see you guys on Monday.